Well, hey everybody, it's so great to see you. This is A Living Power, your online Bible study, and I want to welcome you today to the class. If you are just now finding us and joining us, welcome. It is so great to have you. We are currently in the book of Job. We have about four more days in Job uh, before we move on to the book of Exodus, and today we see Job giving his final dissertation. He's giving his final defense, and then over the next couple of days, one of the friends, Elihu, is going to have his say, and then, dun -dun -dun -dun, God is going to come in and have the last word. So it will be interesting to see God's perspective in this whole situation and how he brings it all together in the end. So we only have about four more days before we move on to Exodus. So stay with me. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home and for joining me in Bible study today. All right, let's get started. Our verse for today is Job 30, verse 24, and it reads, Surely no one would turn against the needy when they cry for help in their trouble. And what I'd like to do now is to go directly to chapter 31, and let's see how Job prepares his defense. All right, so we are looking at page 107. If you're on the Kindle, it's Job chapter 31. And we're going to, I'm going to kind of walk us through this. Let me summarize this chapter for you. Basically, Job is saying, that there are three common sins and he did not partake in any of these three. The first would be lust, which is where we covet. It can be coveting another person or it can be coveting someone else's possessions. That's a sin of the heart. The second thing he mentions would be deceit, lying, stealing, telling untruths. This is a sin of the mouth. Thirdly, he mentions adultery as a common sin. That is sort of a, um, a sin of the hands, so to speak. So he is saying that he has kept himself pure. And in his defense, he says, I have been a good employee. I have been a good neighbor. I have worshipped God. I have been a good steward. I have never trusted in my riches. I have kept evil out of my heart. I have never wished ill on another man or sought revenge. And it's interesting to note that a couple of things that he mentions that are in his situation are just like Jesus and things that he experienced when he had affliction and persecution, and he experienced those things during his life on earth. Listen to these three. Job says that he was falsely accused. Jesus was falsely accused. In verse 12, the text actually reads, people opposed me to my face. The second thing, Job says, people have spit on me. They spit on Jesus during the crucifixion. This is chapter 30, verse 10. In chapter 30, verse 14, he was ridiculed while he was suffering. Job says this was his case. This was his situation. Jesus experienced the same thing. In our text, it says, people jumped on me while I am down. And if you wanted to look again at chapter 30, verse 16 to 19, I'll read it to you. This is how Jesus must have felt during the crucifixion. And now my life seeps away. Depression haunts my days. At night my bones are filled with pain, which gnaws at me relentlessly. With a strong hand, God grabs my shirt. He grips me by the collar of my coat. He has thrown me into the mud. I'm nothing more than da dust and ashes. Wow, we really need to recall the pain and suffering that Jesus went through all for us, all because he loved us so much to save us from our sins. And here we see Jesus yet again in the Old Testament. So Job is saying, surely God will vindicate me. And his friends are saying, surely God will condemn you 
for your sins. What do you say? Will Job be vindicated? Or do you think God will condemn Job? Well, we'll learn the answer to that over the next couple of days. I want to remind you about Proverbs 28, 13. It says, people who conceal their sins don't prosper, but if we confess them and get them out, we will receive mercy. Job did that. It says he did nothing to conceal sin or guilt in his heart, but he confessed that before the Lord. That makes me think of King David. You remember when he said in the Psalms, he said, Search me, create in me a clean heart, O God. Let there be no sin within me, but you search me and purify me, for I confess all things before you, because there is nothing in my life or in the world that is hidden to you, O God, for you know all things. Search me, cleanse me, and make me pure. Now, I think this lesson today and this reading today, um, we can glean a couple of applications into our own life. You know, we may see the uncertainty of worldly honor, praise from men, and suddenly, we can fall, just like Job did, from a position of honor and admiration and praise to a position of being despised and being persecuted. It's easy to lose, and we must never put our confidence in our jobs or anything that would make us think that our identity is not in Christ Jesus. You know, honor comes from God. Honor does not come from a high position. It does not come from an important job or important responsibilities. Honor does not come from the approval of your friends at school or the approval of your coworkers at work. Honor does not even come from our family and our friends. But honor comes from the Lord. When we place 100% of our identity in who we are in Christ and our being seen as a child of God, that kind of honor doesn't change with the wind. That kind of honor is something that we can always be sure of. Do you see your identity as a child of God? Is that where your identity comes? Oh, if we could learn to seek God's approval over man's approval. We would have such freedom in our lives. And the second thing I think we can learn from today is that when we come before the Lord, as Job did when he gave his defense and he said, I have not lied, I have not lusted, I have not neglected the need around me, and I have not concealed sin in my heart. Could you say those same things? How pure are you in your life before the Lord? Do you take your role as being the hands and feet of God in going into the world and meeting the needs of those around us seriously? Do you take that seriously? Do you take sin in your life seriously? Do you confess your sin before the Lord, trusting that He will cleanse you and make you pure and make you whole? yet again. For that was David's prayer, and that here is Job's prayer. That's also my prayer for you. I pray that you, you embrace a life of purity and a life of sinlessness and righteousness, working with God in your heart to be sanctified, to live a life truly honoring of Him. That's my prayer for my life, and that would be my prayer for you as well. Well, I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you as you go and live your life as an ambassador to the Lord God on high. Blessings and peace to you. Shalom. I can't wait to see you again. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you again soon.